Welcome to another video with the Divine Names Mystery Ministry. Today we are on Article 13 of Question 14 in the Prima Pars of St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica. Article 13 asks whether the knowledge of God is of future contingent things. Objection 1. It seems that the knowledge of God is not of future contingent things. For from a necessary cause proceeds a necessary effect. But the knowledge of God is the cause of things known, as was said above in Article 8. Since, therefore, that knowledge is necessary, what he knows must also be necessary. Therefore, the knowledge of God is not of contingent things. Reply to Objection 1. Although the supreme cause is necessary, the effect may be contingent by reason of the proximate contingent cause, just as the germination of a plant is contingent by reason of the proximate contingent cause, although the movement of the sun, which is the first cause, is necessary. So likewise, things known by God are contingent on account of their proximate causes, while the knowledge of God, which is the first cause, is necessary. Objection 2. Further, every conditional proposition of which the antecedent is absolutely necessary must have an absolutely necessary consequent. For the antecedent is to the consequent as principles are to the conclusion. And from necessary principles, only a necessary conclusion can follow, as is proved in Aristotle's Posterior, Chapter 1. But this is a true conditional proposition. Namely, if God, but this is a true conditional proposition. Namely, if God knew that this thing will be, it will be. For the knowledge of God is only of true things. Now the antecedent conditional of this is absolutely necessary because it is eternal and because it is signified as past. Therefore, the consequent is also absolutely necessary. Therefore, whatever God knows is necessary, and so the knowledge of God is not of contingent things. Reply to Objection 2 Some say that this antecedent, God knew this contingent to be future, is not necessary, but contingent, because although it is past, still it imports relation to the future. This, however, does not remove necessity from it. For whatever has had relation to the future must have had it, although the future sometimes does not follow. On the other hand, some say that this antecedent is contingent, because it is a compound of necessary and contingent. As this saying is contingent, Socrates is a white man. But this also is to no purpose. For when we say, God knew this contingent, to be future. Contingent is used here only as the matter of the word, and not as the chief part of the proposition. Hence, its contingency or necessity has no reference to the necessity or contingency of the proposition, or to its being true or false. For it may be just as true that I said a man is an ass, as that I said, Socrates runs, or God is. And the same applies to necessary and contingent. Hence, it must be said that this antecedent is absolutely necessary. Nor does it follow, as some say, that the consequent is absolutely necessary. Because the antecedent is the remote cause of the consequent, which is contingent by reason of the proximate cause. But this is to no purpose, for the conditional would be false were its antecedent the remote necessary cause, and the consequent a contingent effect. As, for example, if I said, if the sun moves, the grass will grow. Therefore, we must not reply otherwise, that when the antecedent contains anything belonging to an act of the soul, the consequent must be taken, not as it is in itself, but as it is in the soul. For the existence of a thing in itself is different from the existence of a thing in the soul. For example, when I say, what the soul understands is immaterial, 
This is to be understood that it is immaterial as it is in the intellect, not as it is in itself. Likewise, if I say, if God knew anything, it will be, the consequent must be understood as it is subject to the divine knowledge, i.e., as it is in its present presentality, and thus it is necessary, as also is the antecedent. For everything that is, while it is, must necessarily be, as the philosopher says in his that might be on interpretation by Aristotle. I'm not sure. Okay, objection three. Further, everything known by God must necessarily be, because even what we ourselves know must necessarily be. And, of course, the knowledge of God is much more certain than ours. But no future contingent thing must necessarily be. Therefore, no contingent future thing is known by God. Thomas's reply to objection three. Things reduced to act in time, as known by us successively in time, but by God are known in eternity, which is above time. Once to us they cannot be certain, for as much as we know future contingent things as such, um, for as much as we know future contingent things as such. But, they are certain, to God alone, whose understanding is in eternity above time, just as he who goes along the road does not see those who come after him, whereas he who sees the whole road from a height sees at once all traveling by the way. Hence, what is known by us must be necessary, even as it is in itself. For what is future contingent in itself cannot be known by us. Whereas what is known by God must be necessary according to the mode in which they are subject to the divine knowledge, as already stated, but not absolutely as considered in their own causes. Hence also this proposition, everything known by God must necessarily be, is usually distinguished for this may refer to the thing or to the same. If it refers to the thing, it is divided and false, for the sense is, everything which God knows is necessary. If understood of the saying, it is composite and true. Um, if understood of the saying, it is composite and true, for the sense is, this proposition, that which is known by God is, is necessary. Now, some urge an objection and say that this distinction holds good with regard to forms that are separable from the subject. Thus, if I said, it is possible for a white thing to be black, it is false as applied to the saying and true as applied to the thing, for a thing which is white can become black, whereas this saying, a white thing is black, can never be true. But in forms that are inseparable, from the subject, the, this distinction does not hold. For instance, if I said, a black crow can be white, for in both senses it is false. Now to be known by God is inseparable from the thing, for what is known by God cannot be known. This objection, however, would hold if these words, that which is known, implied in any disposition inherent to that subject. But since they import an act of the knower, something can be attributed to the thing known in itself, even if it always be known, which is not attributed to it insofar as it stands under actual knowledge. Thus, material existence is attributed to a stone in itself, which is not attributed to it inasmuch as it is known. This is a difficult one. On the contrary, it is written in Psalm 32, verse 15, He who hath made the hearts of every one of them, who understandeth all their works, i.e. of men. Now the works of men are contingent, being subject to free will. Therefore, God knows future contingent things. I answer that, since, as was shown above in Article 9, God knows all things, not only things actual, but also things possible to him and creature, 
And since some of these are future contingent to us, it follows that God knows future contingent things. In evidence of this, we must consider that a contingent thing can be considered in two ways. First, in itself, insofar as it is now in act. And, in this sense, it is not considered as future but as present. Neither is it considered as contingent as having reference to one of two terms, but as determined to one, and on account of this, it can be infallibly the object of certain knowledge. For instance, to the sight to the sense of sight, as when I see that Socrates is sitting down. In another way, a contingent thing can be considered as it is in its cause, and in this way it is considered as future, and as a contingent thing not yet determined to one. For as much as a contingent cause has relation to opposite things, and in this sense a contingent thing is not subject to any certain knowledge, Hence, whoever knows a contingent effect in its cause only has merely a conjectural knowledge of it. Now God knows all contingent things, not only as they are in their causes, but also as each one of them is actually in itself. And although contingent things become actual successively, nevertheless, God knows contingent things not successively, as they are in their own being, as we do, but simultaneously. The reason is because his knowledge is measured by eternity, as is also his being. And eternity, being simultaneously whole, comprises all time, as was said above. Hence, all things that are in time are present to God from eternity, not only because he has the types of things present within him, as some say, but because his glance is carried from eternity over all things as they are in their presentiality presentiality. Hence it is manifest that contingent things are infallibly known by God inasmuch as they are subject to the divine sight and their presentiality. Yet they are future contingent things in relation to their own causes. All right, so that is article 13 of question 14 in the Primo Pars of St. Thomas Aquinas' Summa Theologica. Thanks for sticking it in there with me on this article as it was quite difficult for me to read, and I'm going to definitely have to read this one over to understand it all. See you in the next video.